volcanic rock fields, ice-capped peaks, gushing geysers and barren windswept landscapes. Iceland certainly lives up to its billing as the land of fire and ice. And it's little wonder it's one of the go-to locations for film or TV directors looking to replicate an alien planet or a mythical kingdom. And you might recognise this desolate frozen backdrop behind me from beyond the wall in Game of Thrones. However, we're here to film something strictly non-fictional. A new Land Rover that should be perfect for such inhospitable terrain. Meet the new Discovery Sport. This is the replacement for the model we knew as the Freelander, repositioned as a new junior member of the Discovery family. It's being moved further up market to be a more direct challenger to the likes of the most popular mid-sized luxury SUVs, the Audi Q5 and BMW X3. The Discovery Sport will certainly compete strongly on price. Not only does it start lower from 55,800 in auto form, but it's also well equipped throughout the SE, HSE and HSE luxury trim grades. If you think you can see a bit of the Range Rover Evoque in the styling of the Discovery Sport, don't be surprised. Do not underestimate the influence of that rangey on this car because it's been a huge sale success. So, what we have underneath is very much a twin to the Evoque, particularly the front half, which is virtually identical underneath to the Evoque. The second half, however, well, that's where things get a little more interesting and a little bit more unique. So, what we've got is a new Motorlink rear suspension. And what that's allowed Land Rover to do is create more space in here by widening the suspension towers and coming up with something that is new to the mid-sized luxury SUV segment. Third row seats. Now, it's bloody freezing out here, so I've got to get inside the car. Those third row seats cost just under two grand to add. And unlike the bigger Discovery, the cabin layout is described as a 5 plus 2 rather than a 4 seven-seater. And the back row will certainly be more comfortable for kids in their early teens rather than adults. I've had a chance to thaw out a bit, but I'm still keeping at least one jacket on. So I can tell you a bit more about the interior. Now, it's not quite as fancy looking as the Evoque. However, while it is still sort of function over form, this compared to the Freelander, well, it's another level of quality and craftsmanship. There's also a new 8-inch touchscreen, which has got smarter graphics and more swipeable capability, just like your smartphone. Anyway, let's get on with the drive. You've essentially got a choice of petrol or diesel. The SI4 petrol four-cylinder is your pick if you want the quickest Discovery Sport, and it's also the quieter engine. The diesel is still a bit grumbly, but saying that, the low down torque is beneficial, particularly for off-roading in conditions like this. And it seems to gel just that bit better with the nine speed ZF gearbox. But regardless of engine, the traction capabilities of the Discovery Sport are just pretty sensational. It should be pointed out that all test cars had some additional help in the form of studded winter tyres. Though there's no doubting Land Rover's ingeniously simple terrain response system. Simply press the button corresponding with the surface, whether it's snow, mud and rats or sand, and the vehicle's electronics are automatically tailored to those conditions. The Discovery Sport is also claimed to have the greatest axle articulation in its segment, while we had the chance to confirm the SUV's 60cm wading capability by crossing a fairly deep glacial river. It's certainly easier to cross Iceland in a Discovery Sport than pronounce the names of its natural features. All these volcanic gravel trails and snow trails, great fun to drive on, but don't necessarily give us the best indication of what ride and handling will be like for Australia. However, there's a sense that there is a bit of a firmness to the suspension, but it's also got some crucial suppleness, particularly at speed. And generally, you feel that the driving quality does bode well for Australia. The steering has a really nice heft to it. It's quite direct and it's pleasantly linear. It's definitely among the best steering in the class. We already sensed that. So the Freelander name is dead, but to be honest, are we really going to miss it? Because our first impressions in Europe's most sparsely populated country is that the Discovery Sport has the greater style, versatility and quality to help it sell in bigger numbers in the densely populated world of luxury SUVs.